just sex appeal, but charisma, glamour and unpredictability. On rare occasions, these elements combine and something extraordinary happens, leaving all who witness it changed forever. Picture the scene. It's 1966, and LA's Whiskey A Go Go is enthralled to psychedelic scenesters The Doors, whose singer Jim Morrison is just about to get in touch with his Oedipal side and take the job of frontman into new transgressive territory. You gotta turn those lights way down. We're playing the end at the Whiskey A Go Go. He's on acid. Oh, what a week here. We're not, but we might as well have been. This is the end, beautiful friend. This is the end, my only friend, the end. Little by little, the place starts to stop. The dancers stop, the waitresses stop, and they're just transfixed on Morrison, who's become Dionysus, and he has everyone under control. Jim was not a Vegas act. It was not a show. It was like live theater or something. What the hell is he going to do next kind of thing, you know? This comes out of the blue, just came out of his head. Whether he had worked on it, I have no idea. And did it work? Father? Yes, son. I want to kill you. There's only one place you can go with it after that. Mother. And then we're playing as loud as we possibly can. And he just says, uh, Mother, I want to. <laughs> the place explodes. Everybody starts just whirling. They're broken out of their hypnotic trance. And it was an amazing moment that we had no idea was coming. We just followed him. And he took it to an absolutely brilliant place. Seeing the unsayable and voicing our darkest urges to transgress, Jim Morrison was like some kind of Oedipal stormtrooper. He made explicit what up to then had only ever been implied. But he wasn't the first to mine raw sex appeal. That had been part of the front man's job from the earliest days of rock and roll. Back in the 1950s, a whirlwind of swagger attitude and ambiguous sexual energy was unleashed in the flamboyant form of Little Richard. 